So today I'm going to be telling everybody how to get into Harvard. And no, I did not get into Harvard. I did not even apply. So the question, how do I get into Harvard, is the question that everybody wants to know the answer to. In fact, its acceptance rate, acceptance rate is so low that out of the 100 people here, if all 100 people, people were valedictorians, had perfect SAT scores, played varsity sports, and an instrument, only six people here would be getting in theoretically. So I wanted to know the answer to this question, so I took the initiative and I asked those around me in my high school who got into the Ivy League schools what they did to get in. And what I found out was the exact opposite of everything I've been told. <laughs> so let's start off by taking a quick look at my profile. So if you look here, um, oh, sorry, um, that's for another presentation. Anyway. Um, <laughs> So if you look here, uh, I have a pretty decent uh, GPA, SAT score. I spend my summers at science camp. I play a little bit of junior varsity tennis. And I look like an overall pretty well-rounded kid. However, this is where I went wrong. In fact, it's not good to be well-rounded. And that's the first step to getting into Harvard. Do not be well-rounded. There's an idea developed by Alan Cheng, which states that one should not be well-rounded. Rather, they should have a sharp point. The reason is, when you're well-rounded, you're pretty mediocre at a lot of things. You do a lot of things, but there's not one thing that you've mastered, that you've taken to the next level. However, however, when you develop a big spike or a sharp point, you have something, a skill, whether it be a sport or an instrument, that you've mastered and taken to the next level, which not many other people can compete with. So let's take a look at the few people I asked in my school. Primarily, this first person was accepted into numerous universities including Duke, Penn, Northwestern, and many others. In red, you can see the spike, which is photography. They have won four photography awards. They do photography for East Side, and they're a paid photographer for many events. Another person who has two spikes, one in red, one in blue. Um, the one in red is a, a spike in science. He, he does Science Olympiad and Bio Olympiad, in which he is a finalist, and he's won many awards. The blue spike is for orchestra. He's done orchestra on three different levels. One in the school, all South Jersey orchestra, and even orchestra for Philadelphia Youth Orchestra. And finally, this third person. You could be saying that, hey, maybe, maybe those two first people got in because of their perfect GPA. Well, relatively, this person did not have the sim similar GPA. However, his spike was a lot, lot bigger. He, he's a two-sport varsity athlete, and he has passion for sports. So he decided to take his passion and to put it towards a cause. He created a club at East called Athletes Against Bullying, which is now the largest club at East. And what they do is they train students at East who are athletes and to become anti-bullying specialists when they see bullying occur. Now, outside of the school, a primary example is Mark Zuckerberg. He attended Harvard University, and his spike occurs in computer programming. However, he's probably not well-rounded, as I don't think he would do well on the football field. Um, alternatively, Richard Sherman. He attended Stanford University. His, his big spike occurred because of football, and I don't think he'd be too well at creating something like Facebook. And with that comes the second step of getting into Harvard. Choose your friends wisely. So now that we have the what you need to do to get into Harvard, I thought, okay, well, we need to, we need to know how. Like, what, what do these kids do? So in the questionnaire that I had the students fill out, I asked them a lot of subjective questions, and the first thing that came up was choosing their friends wisely. 10 out of the 11 people who will be attending Ivy League universities next year and were accepted said that their friends were of the same academic caliber. They said that by having friends who were similarly smart, they were able to feel motivated. They felt like, wow, I have somebody to compete with. I have to keep bettering myself. The third step is do not go out more than once a week. So eight out of the 11 people said that they went out four times a month or less. Um, and they said this. They said, sometimes you have to sacrifice going out to better your studies or whatever it may be, even if it's your passion. The fourth step is begin your homework between 4 and 7 PM. So 10 out of the 11 people said they started their homework between 4 and 7 PM. Now, I have to note they did say sometimes they didn't finish till 12 or 1. And that procrastination was huge, but it's more so the principle of putting it on their desk and having that motivation to finally start. 
And with that comes the fifth and most important step to getting into Harvard. Do not worry about getting into Harvard. And this is because a diploma from a university does not have the power to dictate the rest of your life. In fact, it's the hard work that you put in at the school you go to which will dictate the rest of your life. A primary example of this is Warren Buffett, the CEO of Berkshire Hathaway. For his freshman year in undergraduate studies, he went to the University of Pennsylvania, and he absolutely hated it. Thus, he transferred back to his hometown in Lincoln, Nebraska, and he went to the University of Nebraska. And now, he's the fifth richest man in the world, and he's known as one of the greatest investors in the world. And on a similar note um, about universities, there's actually, of the top uh, Fortune 500 companies, there are more CEOs that went to the University of Wisconsin than that went to Harvard. So don't worry about getting into Harvard. And personally, next year I will be going to Rowan University in conjunction with Cooper Medical School as I want to be a doctor when I'm older and I feel like it's the best for my future. And this was not my first choice. It was not even in my top five choices. However, I have adapted to it and I've understood that I have to take the best advantage of the opportunities there. And with that, you have to realize that essentially that's what it's about, taking advantage of the opportunities you have at the university that you attend. Thank you.